today we're in the medieval town of Lanark, which dates back to 1140. We're at Lanark Racecourse, and this is Scotland's National History Festival. It's a massive show, it's the biggest event of its kind ever held in Scotland, and it basically covers 2,000 years of history, from the Romans right through to World War II. Most of this has got some link or other to Lanark Show. Well, this started quite a number of years ago when it was just the two groups that here, Swords of Dalriada and Medieval Clydesdale, that started it. And now it expanded to have many historical periods and hundreds of participants. Over the two days of the festival, people can come to this event and they can learn all about Scotland's heritage and history. We're here with the Glasgow Vikings which uh, are affiliated to the um, Vikings UK, one of the oldest and best Dark Age reenactment groups in Europe. We're here doing, uh, as you see, in a camp. There's about uh, 30 warriors on the field and wives and wains. On site here today we have around about 500 people from across Europe taking part. Participants include the members of at least 25 reenactment groups who are coming from across Britain. This is the first time we've been to Scotland's Festival of History at Lanark and uh, we've brought with us a small uh, campsite. We're doing a couple of uh, small demonstrations uh, in the arena for the public. Hey young sir, so do you know how a grenade works? Huh? Using this bit here, you can set the timer for different, so you can have three, five and seven seconds. So you a decent amount of time before you blow your hand off. <laughs> and we've got a little uh, kiddies assault course where they crawl through the barbed wire, it's not real actually, and they have to crawl through without being heard. Uh, and we've got some uh, kit for the youngsters to try on as well, which just gives them the idea of actually putting on a kilt and jacket and being in uniform. Here, history comes alive, they can see it, they can smell it, they can go and speak to people, they can, in some cases, even try on bits of costume or feel things. And they're getting a first-hand experience of something they cannot get anywhere else. We came from Poland, we stay in Lark Hall in Scotland and we came here for a historic festival because we quite interested about that what's happening here. We really like Vikings so that's that's the best part of festival for us but we would like to see everything part of the history of the country where we stay now. Well we get great response from the public. I mean they're here in, in flocks and they're all asking the obvious questions. They love to see everything that, that goes on in a Viking camp and loads of them have lost touch with so many of the things, you know, like weaving on a loom or even just cooking on an open fire. Last year we roasted an entire lamb over the weekend and the number of people that came up and said, you know, and brought their kids to show that this was what food looked like before it got wrapped in cellophane and put in a supermarket. Mind you, we also had a couple of girls go instantly vegetarian when they saw it, but yeah, that's, that's the price you pay. It's great fun for children as well to see all the different parts of, of history, just to see how, how people live, see how, how was ages ago, how people live without tele, without electric, without gas, without everything. I think the important thing is to try and let people see what it was like to be in the past by actually picking up a sword and feeling how heavy it is, trying on a helmet and seeing, that, seeing just how much your vision is restricted, to actually let people see how people fought with those weapons and how all the various weapons, costumes and things are put together. A lot of the people take huge pride in making sure everything is accurate, everybody has their own thing that they are really interested in recreating. I am wearing the typical clothing and gear that you would wear, uh, Norseman would wear, going into battle. Starting at the top to protect my head, I've got a helmet. Uh, this is made out of four sections of iron and that's riveted onto a sort of band in to keep it together. And then that's padded with, uh, with leather and that can take a hell of a dunt, as you can see. These are real steel weapons, they are full weight. The only thing that's different about them and the ones the Vikings would have used is they're not sharp out there uh, in melee when there's loads of warriors all milling around, slashing and lashing with these weapons, accidents can happen. So what we tend to do is train as hard as we can and then when we do it for real it should go as smoothly as possible. It's not just about looking at things. We have things here where people can go and try. They've come and try archery. And for the young children, they can go and try and shoot a knight. 
the falconry people, they are interested in t teaching people about falconry and some of the lucky children are able to actually hold a falcon. I'm here today to demonstrate medieval falconry and what they were used for back from medieval times to med modern day. Today here we've got a jay falcon, he's called Orin, and the king would have a jay. If you were a pauper, you would not be allowed to fly any of the falcons, so if you were really poor, you'd fly a kestrel. We do have birds that hunt for rabbits, and we have birds that hunt for grouse and partridge and pheasant. So not all the birds are just purely for demonstration, they actually do what they're meant to do in the wild. This year we have added a few time periods. We've added in the 1455 Battle of Lanark, a little known battle in Lanark between Clan Hamilton and Clan Douglas. Also, we've added the Jacobites this year, so for the first time we have the 1745 battle. Today we are actually Royal Artillery, and from the 1745s was Fruit Artillery, which meant we had to walk, we didn't have any horses. And what we're doing today is we're going to be doing a reenactment of part of the skirmish at the Battle of Preston Pans where the government gunners only got fired one shot and then ran away when they saw the Highland Charles coming at them. The, uh, there is also people here from Sharks War, the famous television series. We also have uh, a far wider World War II reenactment group here, including vehicles for the first time. The event is going from strength to strength, partly because the reenactment community want an event in Scotland which is authentic and which can give them what they want to do, which is tell the public their story. Anyone who comes to the Lanark Festival gets a great deal out of it. They'll get entertained um, much better than they would do if they were even going to a movie with CGI. This is, this is the real thing, it's up close and personal. You can touch all the weapons, you can wear the helmets, and if people want to join in, we welcome new members. It would I be very mad.